So, really back. I've been asked by a good friend of mine to make a video on mortality. So, with no other creative ideas for today, let's talk about mortality. day but as humans as animals we're all mortal and we are all going to die that our, we have a finite amount of time here i googled what mortality actually means and number one says the state of subject to death or death especially on large scale uh the cause among it, it's just weird it doesn't matter well mortality is so individual and to you and how touch how in touch with it you are is exactly of your lived experiences and the reason I've been asked this is because I guess it's on the forefront of my mind a lot, a lot more than it should be on anyone else's with a condition like I have, as you know, death is very prevalent and well, I hope a lot sooner for me than it is for you guys. I hope you've got bloody forever to live. But coming to terms that we don't is a very, very hard thing. And I still haven't come completely to terms with that, but I think I've developed some strategies in some ways I can almost trick my mind into happiness. So, firstly to put out, I'm not religious at all. I am, I'd say, as atheist as they come. I'm agnostic as far as if someone could prove something, then yeah, but I'm open to any idea. But for the intense purposes of the video, I'm an atheist. And the last time I said that on video, I got a lot of hate. But, you know, personal opinion's personal opinion. I won't knock on anyone. There's been two major turning points in my life for my mortality. The first one being, holy fuck, something's gonna kill me, and I've actually realized that I'm more than I'm gonna die at some point. And the second one of, oh, well, it's gonna to happen to me anyway, whether it's a few years or a few more years, I'm gonna to have to stare down that gray wall at some point. I think the biggest thing that I've ever done to help myself with that was educate myself in a bit of biology uh, and science, especially uh, science of things coming and going, everything, has a life cycle no matter whether it's the universe or a germ. They all have a life cycle and a finite period of time. And like it or not, one of the big realizations you had to make is we are not special. Humans are told we're special and we matter. And if you look at that from a universe point of view, we're not special at all. But that doesn't mean that we're not special to each other. And I think that's what means a lot to me is that everyone who's ever come before me has died and why should I be why should I be the special one? Why should I be some sort of god? I'm not. That realistically we're made up of the same shit that all this and his is made up of. It's just stardust. And you know, I'm just a way that those are all put together. It doesn't mean I'm more or less than anything else. And I think that it was this realisation that once looking into how big the universe is, well at least the universe we know of that our own galaxies, a couple of hundred billion stars and the one next to us being Andromeda is a couple of hundred billion as well. That the amount of planets there that can actually harbor life that are in the same zone as Earth is in the millions. And realistically, we're probably not alone. But if we are alone in this universe of trillions upon trillions upon trillions of different planets, galaxies, atoms, germs, then if we're alone, we are the most important thing in the world, not only to each other, but to the universe, as we are, as far as we know, the only, that we are the only intelligent life form that may exist in this universe and may ever exist. Another thing I had to learn pretty much the hard way was I had some feeling of that I was owed something, and I'm not sure if this is growing up in a Western culture or it's a human a human sort of feeling, but 
I felt like I was owed that, you know, 85 years on Earth. When, of course, I'm not owed that. I'm not owed shit. And that might be a bit savage, but with a treatment like mine, I got diagnosed, well, a diagnosis like mine, I should say, I got diagnosed at 21, 22 years old. Some people get nowhere near that old. I've done so much. Some people don't ever really even get to take their first breath. In fact, most things that could harm my life as far as sperm and eggs never get that first breath. So if you can listen and watch this and if you live in especially like a country like Australia or any Western culture, we already are so, so lucky. So then if we're a makeup of, you know, a billion atoms in a universe of trillions upon trillions of atoms, why does the individual matter? Why should I treat myself with respect, you with respect, anyone? Well, this whole world would be a different place if you or me weren't born. That it is impossible for a human to come onto this earth and not have some lasting impact. You have a unique role to play in the grand scheme of things. And you can do amazing things, no matter what your diagnosis or, or anything is, that your mark you make on this earth, especially in the days of social media and cameras and everything, you could make a mark that will never be forgotten. One of the big things with my mortality that helped me was making sure that mark was significant enough. So I release a lot of videos like this. You know, this might be vlog 40, 41. I'm not sure what number it is. Um, you'll know before me because it'll be in the title that when I'm gone, that my parents, my friends, my loved ones, my the future generations of my family go, holy fuck, that's Willie or that's Matt as well as my raising money for brain cancer or cancer in general that i want someone one day to be sitting there with their kid and sadly that kid gets diagnosed with a brain tumor and the doctor go look this is all right because there's this treatment we can do and you know they're doing some some searching you know holy fuck, there's this dickhead flipping tires for kilometers raising money for this and we wouldn't have that trip without it so i guess especially donating charitably as long as you do it correctly that has as much lasting effect on how we move forward as a species that, that anything. And you as a person, you have never existed before and you will never exist again, no matter how many trillions of years go past. And if you look at the trillion years and what any life expectancy is in that, it's not even a drop in the ocean, but no one like you will ever be here again. No one who can do the unique things you can do and be in your brain talking to yourself. That will never exist again. So in your universe, you are the most important thing that can ever, can ever be. With that, take the risk of thinking for yourself. Much more happiness comes of thinking for yourself. It's so easy to be influenced by the media, by the news, by politicians, by anyone. People, social media influencers, so to speak. Um, but... No one can think like you and no one will have the perspective on things exactly like you. So the risk, I guess, you take of thinking for yourself, the reward is, is so much and the, re and the punishment for not thinking for yourself is may as well be a, a sheep out in a paddock. I'm going to play you a video now that I made at New Year's after my year of being diagnosed and chemo and going through such a hard time and I was dealing with death and dealing with all these new emotions. I know it's a bit old now, but I really hope um, you enjoy watching it. So it's that time of year. Our pale blue dot has travelled another 940 million kilometre journey around a burning ball of gas in an infinitely expanding universe. It's easy to question your purpose and the meaning of it all, but I'll come back to that. This year, above all else, has been a year of discovery. Discovering the world, discovering a tumour, Friendships, love, and above all else, discovering myself. But first, we need to stop and reflect on those who have lost this year, who have forever been our hearts and memory lives on in all of us. This year started for me as a one-way solo trip to Finland that led me through 17 countries, meeting some of the greatest people, seeing some amazing places, starting a boy band and successfully doing a shoey in every country. I came home, back to work, jumped out of some planes, went to the medical centre for some scans, and that's when everything seemed to unravel. Cancer. Fucking brain cancer on my 22nd birthday. 
you asshole. Why me? A question we all ask, but the answer will never come. Fear, confusion, anxiety set in, and the months following seem to turn into a blur. I met a psychologist who changed my whole existence. He told me to share my story, to not have a bucket list, but to find a purpose. I started my Instagram, and shortly after that, my viral Thai living event took place. Social media has connected me to some of the best people in the world who now I couldn't live without. My Thai flips took me around the country, on the telly, and $52,000 closer to a cure for this horrible disease. My cancer has shown me to find happiness in the ability to help others and to smile, love and laugh no matter what's going on. 2018 for me has been a year to see past the bullshit and into what truly matters. Do we matter on the scale of the universe? No. We're little specks of dust floating in the forever vastness and blackness of space. But do we matter on the scale of Earth? Yes. Because all we have in the end is each other. And this amazing life with the ability to do anything we want. No matter how long or short, don't let opportunities pass you. Tell people that you love that you actually love them. We won't be here forever. So fuck it. Why not wear a smile every day, cry when you need, love each other and give back. For everyone that was part of my 2018, thank you. I intend 2019 to be the year I retake the reins of my health, to speak and share my story to as many people as possible and be even happier than I am this year. Never stop smiling. See you next year. I don't have it with me, but I really employ anyone who's struggling with their own mortality or or a friend with it read the book called mortal or mortality sorry by christopher hitchens he's an author that wrote the book while he was dying of cancer in, you know his final weeks months and days and i think the super harsh truth of it really rings true to people i guess like me and i guess if you're watching this far in yourself um and i like the quote from it from saul bellow it says, death is the dark backing that a mirror needs if we are able to see anything. And that's true. Without death, life isn't special. And that is, I think, the idea of living for eternity means no single day is special, no year is special, no moment is special, because if it's eternal, then it'll happen again. So why do it today? Why do it now? Why plan for tomorrow? So I guess my sign off of this very serious video on them. I promise more fun will come than this. Dealing with your mortality. Well, it's bound to happen either now or soon or at some point in the future we're going to die. And you have to accept that. The way I've accepted it is looking at science and looking at that I, in the big scheme of things, I'm not that important. But in the small scheme of things, with my friends and my family and people that I can reach and change and influence that me and them are the most important people in, the, in this world. Also, that... Also, make something that's lasting, whether it be a great influence on your kids, making a charitable cause, a change, or just trying to set a positive influence in this world that will look, change for generations to come. I really implore that that is one of the biggest things that will help you know that your legacy will live on into the future. The final tip is don't take yourself too seriously. At the end of the day, we're basically just fucking monkeys running around the world and somehow we've developed cars and fire and bikes and guns and all this other shit. But don't take yourself too seriously. Have a laugh. Have a drink. Don't look too harshly at yourself in the mirror. Look in yourself, see what you need to sort out, and if you can do it, do it. If you can't do it, well, you know, focus on things you can change. There's a lot in this world you can't. Look at my diagnosis. No one can change it. Not even me, not my God, no, no one. Um, so why is it worth thinking about too much? And another quote from Hitchens. To the dumb question, why me? The cosmos barely bothers to return the reply. Why not? And that's right, why not me? Why should it be a kid? Why should it be anyone else? No one's deserving of this, but it's just a stati statistical anomaly that this happens. 
So that's my view on mortality, that we're here, the amount of years our body lasts us, we try and do what we can, be as happy as we can, have the influence on people that we can. But from someone like me, you know, looking at years, months, whatever I have, I'm not upset by it because I like to think I've had positive influence on people and that I've done everything I've ever set out to do. It doesn't mean stop having goals. There's heaps of goals I will never reach. I know I'll never reach them. But that's okay. And it's okay to, you know, keep grinding along and, and keep making changes we want to see, especially in ourselves. So sorry about the real serious video, guys. Um, thank you, and I really hope that, I really hope you get something out of this. Thanks.